and goes on for weeks. Finally, after 15 months, they find what they've been seeking, one faulty wire. We looked at all of the possible sources of uh, heat that might start a fire in that area. And in this instance, um, we did uh, discover a wire that uh, arced in that way. And right next to it was some very flammable material called uh, metallized polyethylene terephthalate covering material that uh, covers the insulation blankets. The insulation blankets which line the MD-11 are common on commercial airlines worldwide. They have passed the industry's flammability tests, which require materials to self-extinguish after a reasonable period of time. The investigation takes an abrupt turn. Instead of seeking the cause of the fire, the TSB now focuses on the flammable materials that fueled it. This thermal acoustical material that was in this aircraft was very flammable, even though it passed a test. It does sustain and it does propagate flame. So this investigation did focus on the flammability of materials and the requirement to reassess the criteria that is used to certify materials, not just thermal acoustical insulation blanket material, but also other materials that goes into aircraft, much of it in hidden areas. Now they have their answer. A wire arced in a closed space behind the cockpit. The arc ignited the insulation, which in turn lit other materials, such as foams and plastics. The pilots could not sense how quickly the fire intensified. But 14 minutes after they declared pan, 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 the fire disabled all electronics in the cockpit the black boxes went dead. Forensic examination also helped shed light on the desperate final minutes in the cockpit. Lowe was in his seat. Captain Zimmerman was not, likely fighting the fire and probably dead before impact. The uh, first officer was probably trying to find a place where he could put this big airplane. Um, he just didn't have a lot going for him. He didn't have a lot of instrumentation left. And I'm sure he was looking for something, some indication that would give him an idea of where he could put the airplane down, maybe even ditch the airplane. What is known is that the first officer was in his seat, whether he was uh, unconscious, conscious, maybe had severe degree burns on his skin. It's not known. We know the captain was not in his seat, so very likely he was trying to fight the fire that the checklists were found uh, molten together, the pages, indicates that they were used to fight a fire. At 10.30, Lowe shut down engine two. Investigators determined that he likely received a warning that the engine was on fire. Chillingly, it proved that Lowe was alive a minute before impact. They could not determine whether the passengers were aware of the fire, at least until the very final moments. There were traces found of soot and smoke extending as much far to the business class overhead area. Whether the passengers have smelled the smoke, it's not known. Uh, DNA analysis showed that they had no residue in their body. The aircraft hits the water with a force of 350 Gs. The TSB spends four and a half years and 40 million US dollars, the largest air disaster investigation in Canada's history. Their conclusion is one powerful message. Flammable materials do not belong on commercial aircraft. The rate of progression in this airplane, I think, surprised us and surprised uh, others. Uh, and uh, that's why we emphasize, again, the importance of um, 
raising the bar on the flammability standards for materials used in airplanes. Ian Shaw waited four years for the report to tell him what small flaw took the life of his daughter. But the truth has not extinguished his anger at Swiss Air. There has to be accountability. If you are involved in wrongdoing, you must be held accountable. And you must declare your sense of respons responsibility. Otherwise, you are hiding and you are hiding, in this case, behind the flag of Switzerland. I think it's unbelievable. In the aftermath of the disaster, Swiss Air decides to remove the flammable insulate from its entire fleet. They also make changes to checklist procedure, reducing response time in a cockpit smoke emergency. But plagued with financial problems, the mighty airline shocks the industry when it goes bankrupt in October 2001. The flammable insulation that sets Swiss Air ablaze remains in two-thirds of commercial airlines today, but not for very much longer. The metallized polyethylene terephthalate material has been essentially banned from aircraft and the criteria to certify that kind of material for use in airplanes has been worked on. It has not been put into law as yet, but uh, we look forward to that being done, so the criteria is more stringent. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has given a deadline of 2005 to remove the material from all commercial aircraft. This major overhaul aims to ensure the Swiss Air tragedy will not be repeated. For Ian Shaw, losing his daughter so suddenly and violently has left a permanent emotional scar. He left his wife and his wealth behind in Geneva and now runs a modest restaurant in Nova Scotia in view of the sea where his daughter died. Why would I come here to this particular point in Nova Scotia? A lot of people have said, oh yes, we fully understand you want to be close to your daughter and, and um, the point where the plane crashed. That is no part of my being here. Swiss Air um, ripped out of me any possibility of proximity to my daughter. I found a comfort in the awareness of the presence of the eternal ocean, the ocean which has been going backwards and forwards for many, many, many thousands, millions of years. I came here because I had to. Um, I, I can't give a fully rational declaration to you of why I came here. I can only say to you, I am in the right place for the wrong reasons. <laughs>